Hello and welcome back to our Stealth AI series. In this episode, we're going to start work on our guard AI finally and get them to patrol a certain area. So let's get cracking with this. I'm going to start with a new folder in my content browser here and call it enemy uh, AI. And let's go into there like so. I'm going to add new blueprint class and choose a character and this will be called a guard. Actually, we'll call it enemy. We'll make a, a parent enemy. There we go. And we can also make a new controller class for this. So I'm going to go into new parent class and choose a search box here for AI controller. And there, there, there we go. And choose the green button to select it. And we'll call this one enemy AI. Like so. Next, I'm going to go add new artificial intelligence and choose a behavior tree. And we'll call this one guard behavior. And I'm then going to make another one, or another blackboard, sorry, and call this one guard blackboard. On the enemy, I'm going to right click on that and create a child blueprint class and call this one guard enemy. So I'm designing an enemy class, parent, and then having a child one, which is a guard. Now, this is useful if you have different types of guards, different types of enemies that you can use uh, that but functionally do the same thing. So we're going to go into the parent class and do most of the work in the parent class. And in here, we're going to give it a basic mesh of the uh, skeleton. We'll do the mannequin. And we'll do this one. And we'll give it the, uh, which one was it? It was this one. There we go. That animation class that comes with the animation starter kit. So this is from the animation start kit. Hit compile. And that's it. Okay, so on here, we're going to go to the event, uh, not the event graph, the class defaults. And change the AI controller class here to become the enemy AI controller. Hit compile and then close that. Next, we're going to go into the enemy AI and go to the event graph and on begin play. We're going to tell it to run behavior tree, and that behavior tree is going to be our guard behavior. Hit compile and then close that. On our guard behavior, we want to make sure that it's using the correct blackboard by going to the right hand side and you see behavior tree. You should see automatically put in there the guard blackboard. Uh, class. If it's not in there, just choose it from the drop down. There you go. Hit save for all those things. So save all, and there they all are. Next, you need to put in a nav mesh. Now, a nav mesh is what can makes the actor able to see where the floor is. So, in your place actors window on the left here, you're going to search for nav mesh bounds volume. And you want to drag this into your level. And make sure it covers all of the level that you want the actor to walk along. So I'm just going to go in here and just stretch it out to cover a portion of the map. Now, if you hit P on your keyboard, you will see the nav mesh being generated. And make it a bit taller. So it gets over this ramp here. Uh, a little bit taller still. There you go. So it gets up here. And there we have it. Okay. So now we have a nav mesh, our guard can now be able to see the floor and walk around it. So to start things off by getting it guard just to walk around randomly uh, on the floor so we can get that working. So for that we're going to go into our behavior tree and in our behavior tree we're going to go down and do a selector node. Now I've got loads of videos on AI so I'm not going to go into all the basics of this. If you want to learn how AI behavior trees work I've got plenty of videos about that so go check that out. Um, right now on my channel you can catch up there but the selector node briefly what it's going to do is choose which path it goes down it's always going to try the left hand one first if that one fails then it'll go down the next one and then the next one and then the next one so the selector first and then you go into a sequence and the sequence is different because what it does is it plays all the nodes if they're all successful if it fails and the whole sequence fails and it goes back up the chain remember it's an order from left to right so sequence will do the first one here, then it do the next one here, then the next one here, and so on and so forth. 
So on this sequence here, we're going to make it just find a random location and walk to that location. So for that, we need a new task because there's no task to just find a random location. So let's create a new task by going up to the top left over here. New task. And I'm going to immediately rename it because it stupidly doesn't give us a chance to rename it when we create it. So I'm going to go into my content browser and just change the name of this to something a bit more friendly. So I'm going to call this one find random point underscore task. And we're going to go into that to the graph here. Now this graph is pretty simple. You're going to have to start things off with a receive execute AI. And all tasks will start with this. This is like the begin play of a task. From here, we're going to get a random point. Uh, if I spell it right, random point inevitable radius. Now the origin for this is going to be the uh, actors controlled pawn and its location. So from controlled pawn, get location, and you'll see get actor location. And the radius is how far you want them to look to find a, a place to walk to. So this radius here, we're going to change that to uh, 1000. And the random location is going to get plugged into a Blackboard key selector. So on the left hand side, you'll see variables, go new variable and call it a uh, target vector. And we're going to change that. Actually, no, we we'll just change it target location. There we go. If I can spell it correctly, that would help. Then we'll change the variable type for that to a blackboard key selector and make it editable by ticking the instance editable box. So this is basically a bucket that we can put values into uh, that can be used stored later on from the blackboard because tasks don't have a way to communicate between each other. They can only communicate with the blackboard indirectly. So we're going to take this and do get and from there we're going to set value as vector. Plug that in and then plug that into the execute AI. So whatever value we get out of this get random point in navigable radius will get now get stored to this blackboard key that we've we haven't yet set up, but we'll set up in a moment. When that's finished, we're gonna drag out and do a finish execute. Make sure you do tick this success box to be true, otherwise it will never ever succeed on this task and fail. Once you've done that, compile and close that. Next on your sequence, drag this out and you should now find your find random point task. And there it is. Now, as I said, we need a blackboard key that we haven't yet made. So let's make it. So go to the blackboard on the top right and go new key and choose vector. And I'm going to name this one a target location vector. Hit save. Go back to your behavior tree, click on your find random point task, and you should see your target location key that you made has now been set to that location vector key on the blackboard that we just made. If it doesn't, just use it from the drop down. Hit save. Once it's done that, after the, on the next task from the sequence, we're going to do a move to. And the move to is going to use that same vector from the blackboard. Now, because it's the only vector on there, it should pick it by default. But if it hasn't, just make sure you click on the blackboard key drop down is set to the correct vector. When you've done that, hit save, and there you go. So now we can drag our enemy into this world. So I'm going to drag my guard out here. And they will now walk about the whole environment as they wish. Now he's walking sideways, that's because I forgot to go into my enemy and rotate the mesh in the viewport to face the same way as the arrow. Now he won't look so strange. Okay. And that's it, so that's the basic setup for our guard. So in the next part, we're gonna start adding the patrolling behavior so they can patrol around this level uh, waiting to find and capture the, MP the player character. So join us in the next part right now over on patreon.com forward slash Ryan Daily, where all my patrons have supported me and getting access to all my videos well before anyone else. So thank you to everyone who has supported me over there. If you're watching this and you haven't yet subscribed, make sure you hit that subscribe button. Otherwise, you'll miss out on all my content that I release each week, plus my live streams. Thanks very much for watching, and I'll see you all next time. Bye for now.